I'm going to give you a whole load of different pull-up variations you can add to your programs to level up your pull-up game. First things first, I'm just going to call everything a pull-up. At the end of the day, you are pulling up. You're pulling your weight up. You could say chin up because you're getting your chin over the bar, but I'm not chinning, I'm pulling. So that's the first things first. The pull-up is a very important movement. It goes beyond the realms of just regular exercise into the realm of self-preservation because in the unlikely circumstance that you might need to use those skills, you might find yourself in a position where you need to pull yourself up onto or over an obstacle, maybe to save your own life. So given this, it's important to incorporate pull-ups, which I do in you know, almost all of my uh, workout phases to be able to train a variety of different grips and angles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a, a huge range of different variations in these angles. What I'm not gonna cover is your basic movements, your supinated, your pronated, or your neutral grips. These are the basics. Needless to say, you can apply a lot of different varieties of uh, grip to some of the variations I'm gonna show you, unless the grip is predetermined. I'm also not gonna go between the difference between close grip, uh, middle grip and wide grip, because again, it's, this, it's that's the, the common sense, most basic approach. Everyone knows the differences between those movements. What I'm gonna instead focus on is the ability to first do pull-ups, and then I'm gonna focus on how to make those a little bit more advanced, then I'm gonna make them even more advanced, and then I'm gonna show you some kind of, you know, more fancy exercises. That would be coming at the end. Now, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and do for every single variation of pull-up, I'm gonna try and do four repetitions. So that automatically leads to a good opportunity for you to guess just how many different pull-ups in total I'm gonna to do by the end of this video. I don't know how many I'm gonna do, but there's gonna be a lot of variations, four of each. Put your answers in the comments, take a guess before you get to the end of the video, and I'll put down, I'll add them up and put them down at the end. So first off, we need to start at the beginning because some people don't have the ability to do a basic pull-up. So if we start at the beginning, we are going to use tools that would give us assisted pull-ups. Now, if you can't do a pull-up, then if you're too weak, you're going to have to get stronger. If you're too fat, you're going to have to get lighter. It's as simple as that, because when it comes to it, using my previous example, when it comes to saving your own life, if you don't save your own life, unless the odds are impossible, it's either because you are too weak or you are too heavy. It's a simple fact, if you can't pull yourself up, it's gonna be basically down to one of those two factors. So let's start at the beginning. When it comes to assisted pull-ups, you have different options. You could use a machine, which you have, we call it the chin assist or pull-up assist machine. I'm not gonna do any of those because they're the basic movements. I'm gonna move on to uh, a, an exercise that you can do in the gym if you have resistance bands because it's much more accessible for everyone. That's gonna be basically band assisted pull-ups. And I'll show you how I prefer to set up the bands, because everyone does it slightly differently. This is gonna be my preferred method. A Couple of factors when it comes to the band-assisted pull-ups is that obviously the resistance band is gonna increase as you get to the lowest part of the movement. So it's gonna make it easier as you get into the hardest part of the movement. When you think of any of the pull-up movements, the closer you get your hands to the chest, the stronger. It's the saying in jiu-jitsu, you know, take it to heart. Anytime you get it close to your chest, there's gonna be your strongest part of the movement. So when you're at that maximum stretch, you need to set the band up that you think, right, you know, can this band take my weight and will it give me enough assistance to get to the top of the movement? Let's get on with the setup. So remember, this is what I call a bridge the gap exercise using bands. I'm gonna use a very light band because I don't wanna give this much assistance. So for my setup, I'd go over, through. The more bands you have, the harder this gets to get into position. What I like to do is take the foot, get to full extension on the band, and then I put my foot on top of the band. I'm going to, uh, whichever grip I'm gonna go for, this time is gonna be a pronated, a supinated grip. Foot goes on top. The reason I put my foot on top is that sometimes when you're doing pull-ups and it gets tough, your legs start to do weird things. If this band isn't in the right position, for example, it could be on the, the front of your toes and you start doing weird things with your legs, you snap up, it's gonna crack you in the chest. This is why I put my foot right through the middle of the band and I go on top of the band. So there's no real way that's gonna go anywhere. If it goes anywhere, it's gonna go up the back of my leg. And then from that position, it helps when you're doing this with a box to have the box further away than I've got it because you wanna be able to go into a hang. Remember the band is always gonna to wanna to pull you forward. So from that position, 
into a stretch leg on the top. Pull up, one, two, three, four. Push the band down, take the strain, lift the leg and out the band. If this isn't enough, you can just do double the band or have one thicker band. That's the first one. So while we're in this position, another exercise you can do is bridge the gap exercise. A great overall strength builder is a negative pull up. Don't need the band for this one. What you do need is a bit of confidence because you're going to go to your end range and you need to make sure you know where all your equipment is to restart. You're taking the, your grip. You might have to add a small jump to this one to get yourself up to the top. The negatives allow you the biggest strength increase for the least mechanical difficulty and risk of injury. And you'll get big strength gains from doing these negatives. Again, it's a great bridging exercise for you to build up the strength to be able to go to full body weight chin-ups. My preference would be from this position, jump up, you're gonna catch four, three, two, one to complete hang, back up into the next one, jump, lock, four, three, two, one. And again, jump, lock, four, three, two, one. Your negative pace is going to be anywhere between two and four seconds. Jump. Four, three, two, one. Again, you can do different grips. All right, and the last variation of the assisted pull-ups is the jump to pull-up. Now, this one depends on your athleticism and the height of the bar. You need to be able to have enough athleticism to jump high enough, to get high enough to bypass the, the toughest part of the movement at the bottom. At the end of it, you automatically engage your core. You generally bring your knees up, which makes it a little bit easier. So this is, again, a good bridging exercise. You can also use this as a conditioning exercise. If you can do pull-ups, no problem. It's great as a down, up, jump, down, up, jump, down, up. Well, let's get started with this one. So I've got to do four repetitions. One. Drop off. Two. This bar is quite high for me, so I'm not getting as high as I would normally get. If I maybe I would put a box underneath me to make it a bit easier. But again, you can adjust the, the height of the boxes. Three. And I'm going to show you the next variation where you can add a negative to the end of it to again to get that kind of extra strength increase. Jump, hold, four, three, two, one. And I switch to an overhand grip because it's easier to catch without smashing your thumbs or your fingers on the jump. Right, now the bad news for me is I've just filmed a load of pull-ups and it didn't work, I had a camera malfunction, so I'm gonna to have to do them all again. I'm gonna be nice though, I'm not gonna include them in the pull-ups missed. So we're gonna talk about the next phase, which is making pull-ups more difficult. This is the first advanced stage. Now obviously when you wanna make things more difficult, you gotta add weight to your body. You could either just get fat or you could use tools like bands, chains and vests and belts. So what we're going to do first is talk about belts and vests. This is a 20 pound vest when it's stuck on over the shoulders. It sticks to the chest. It has a nice feel when you're doing the pull-ups. The same weight on a vest feels very different in that it tends to, because it's lowering your center of gravity, tends to hang a little bit and ch change the movement. My preference is to do it with a combination. So you have vest, you have weight belt, and you have combination weights belt and vest. Because the reason I do a combination is that I don't have a vest or seldom a found vest that is heavy enough to make the pull-ups difficult for my rep ranges. So I have to do a combination. I'm gonna show you a quick variation or quick set. Like I said, I'm gonna do four of everything, but this is gonna be basically double for me. Normally I would stick this on and tie it all up, but I'm not gonna do that for speed. Four reps, all right. One, two, three, four. All right, any grip you want. Thing to say about grips is generally the wider you go on the grip, the more unstable it becomes on the shoulder. So you have to really think about this if you're going to do heavy, heavy lift on a wide grip, the potential risk to the shoulder. You need good shoulder health on this one. I tend to stick to middle grips and underhand grips because it puts less strain on my shoulders. And the last thing you want when you're training is a long shoulder injury because they linger and linger and linger and they prevent you from doing almost everything. All right, next one is what we would say is accommodating resistance. You can use chains or you can use bands for this. 
if think of this as the opposite of the band assisted pull up when you're doing the band assisted pull up it stretches and helps lift you up this is going to be the opposite and it's going to be anchored to the floor if this is a chain pull the chains at the bottom as you lift you lift link by link by link it gets tougher you want to make sure you leave some chains on the floor otherwise it's going to start to swing and throw you around you can also double over the chains have a longer chain on the top so it goes from easy to very tough my preference is to do it with resistance bands the difference between chain and resistance bands is that the accommodating resistance is exponential as you get higher and higher up the band resistance gets more and more and more because it's actively trying to pull you down to the floor this is my setup this is going to be held down by a 34 kilo weight so it's a good idea to get a weight that you know is going to be heavy enough to keep the bar uh, the, the, the bands down all right my preference step through i'm going to wear it like a belt that i step through Grab hold, middle, pull, round the hips. Get your grip, four reps. One, it's tough. Two, three, four. So I'm guessing I'm getting around about maybe 30 kilos of resistance at the top from maybe five kilos, 10 kilos. So it's a big jump. Now, obviously on this, you can combine a vest and the bands to make a, a combination lift if you feel as if you want to work on you know a, a mix between the two where it's not all bands and it's not all weight on the vest all right next one we're going to move on to is accessories that you can use to make your lifts a bit more challenging all right next one we're going to move on to is the accessories so you can see three different things we've got rings we've got a suspension trainer and we've got these little handles and the three things are essentially going to allow for the same outcome they're going to allow for you to rotate your grip it makes a big difference if your hand is fixed it's less for you to think about when you have a, a rotating handle it makes a big difference to the difficulty of the movement i'm not 100 percent sure exactly why that is mainly because i haven't researched it i just know it is from experience uh, the suspension train is a little bit more difficult to set up because they come at a fixed length so you'd have to wrap over a few times and it makes it a little bit more difficult the rings are much easier to set up because you can just shorten 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 all the way to the top but one of my preferences is to use these things you've probably seen them on instagram you've seen them advertised people wrapping them around bars it looks like a bit of a gimmick to be honest they're actually quite good they're quite useful they're quite versatile especially good if you go to a gym with bad handles you can use them to improvise so i'm going to show you a couple of repetitions using these grips and i'll show you how to basically tweak the movements so you can get a kind of three in one all right, normally I would jump for this but as a, because I'm a short ass, but I'm not going to jump to the handles and move. All right, let me move your camera position. All right, so the benefit of these is you can choose any angle. You can keep them from this position. You can go neutral. You can go fully uh, supinated. Or you can add a rotation, which I'm going to do for now. All right, so it's pull, one, twist, two, three. I'm going to breathe in on the movement. Four. Tip for your breathing when you do pull-ups is inhale as you do the movements. This way I feel as if if you exhale on the effort, there's a tendency for you want to want to do this. If you're inhaling, you automatically bring the chest up and you pull the rib cage open and you retract the shoulder blades around the back. You get a much better overall movement and it helps with your timing. All right, next we're going to move on to some more advanced exercises. This is a, a three exercises. They culminate in a muscle up. I'm going to show you two variations of exercise that will help you get to a muscle up. The first one is a power push up. I add this to my power phases, my strength phases. It's a difficult exercise because it takes a lot of strength and a lot of power to be able to get enough speed to leave the bar and catch the bar and control the descent. Um, I prefer to do this with an overhand grip. You can do it with an underhand grip. But when you do it with an overhand grip, you naturally move away from the bar. If you do it with an underhand grip, there's a risk of you cracking your nose or making this tough on the thumbs. Four reps, power, pull up. All right. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's number one. Next exercise is a sternum pull up. I'm not so good at this because I don't have uh, particularly good shoulder mobility. This is much easier if you have good shoulder mobility. You're going to pull up and you're going to pull to the sternum. 
it's a really high range, a full range movement. And again, it's bridging the gap between this and the muscle up, which comes after this one. So four sternum push-ups. One, two, three, four. And you see you're naturally beginning to get that rotation in. Next will be the muscle up. All right, I've shifted up my camera because I'm going up high. Make sure you're doing muscle ups, you have enough clearance overhead. All right, I'm gonna go straight into this. I haven't practiced. I'm gonna take my mic off because I don't want to go flying across the room. All right, let's see. Four. So it's a pull up, but it's also a dip. It's also a lot of everything else. I can feel this a lot because yesterday I did chest. I can feel my chest, I can feel my triceps a lot. So muscle up is probably as advanced as it gets in terms of, and most, the most practical it gets in terms, in terms of being able to turn uh, a pull up into a self preservation exercise. All right, next we're moving on to some, just some cool variations. Different angles, different challenges, uneven movements, different grips. And this is something I throw in more periodically. It's a different kind of challenge as opposed to my more set, four sets of four or four sets of six. So these are going to be the advanced change of angle exercises. After this, we'll move on to some grip-based chin-ups. All right, next one is called a commando pull-up. I don't know why it's called a commando pull-up. It sounds cool. I'm going to stick with that. It's sometimes also called a hockey grip pull-up, you could say golf club, tennis racket pull-up, because it's an over-under grip. It's going to be close. And the difference with this exercise is it challenges the back in different positions, because what, you're always going to have one hand in front, so it will vary when you're going left or right. Next set, you either need to do left or right, or you need to split your set in half. I'm going to do four reps. I'm just going to do them on one side. It's a bright light. I'll see if I can even see this bar. All right, yeah, okay. Go right. one, other side, two, three, and four. Now the next variation I'm going to go straight into is a walking commando pull-up. This time you don't need to switch anything because you're going to alternate your hands each time. So it's going to be one, two, three, and four. Ooh. Now the next two lifts, I'm going to involve one of these. This is basically very similar to the commando pull-up, and that you're going to go from one side to the other. You're up, over the top, one, two, three, and four. Okay. Next one is maybe my favorite variation in terms of range of motion, because this really is a full pull. You're going from an overhead reach, and as you pull, you're gonna arch back, and you're gonna to pull to the sternum, so effectively you're going like this on the movement. You need a long bar on this one to make sure you have space for your head and space for your hips at the bottom. All right, this is a hard one, so four reps. From a hand, one. Two, three, four. I don't like the first one. So I did it again. All right. So that's a sternum V bar pull up. Hard going. Next. All right. The second to last sequence is grip based pull ups. Now I've got a, an, an assortment, a plethora, a menagerie of grip-based gauntlets to go through. Uh, one thing I didn't bring was a towel, so I've got two uh, figure eight straps there. They're gonna represent the towel. Normally you would take a towel, throw it over, grab hold of the towel. It's thin, it wants to slip between your fingers. I'm gonna start with that one. Four repetitions. Ooh, buddy. So I'm not going through it, I'm just gonna grab it as it is. Oh yeah, it's hard. One, snappage. Two, oh, Jesus, I better get these done quick. Three, four. Ooh, that sounded like popcorn. 
Jesus. It's a strange revelation that pull-up handles can't be used to be grabbed hold of to do chin-ups. But I feel like my fingers. All right, so that's variation one. Imagine that as a towel. It feels pretty much the same. Second is a rope. Very similar to a towel, except obviously it's a little bit thicker. It's going to step and get suspended. And for this one, I'm going to move to the middle because I'm going to naturally go between. All right. One, two, three, four. And that is all fingers, all hands. That's hard going. All right. That's number two. Next one, I've got my fat grips ready. I'm going to do an overhand grip on the fat grips. And then I'm finally going to try and do a fingertip grip in the middle. Now, this is quite tough because the bar itself is quite thick. So this is going to be a real, real effort. One, two, three, four. Yeah, not too bad. And then in a few seconds, I'm going to move on to just trying to hold with the fingertips. So I'm not going to get my whole hand around there. I'm going to be clinging on like this. And obviously you can stop taking fingers away. Two fingers, one thumb. All right. I'll go wider. Full hang. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right, and the final of the grip exercises is the arm supported single arm pull up because all your weight is now going to one arm. Tough variation. Been a long time since we've done these. Be interested to see if we can still do them after all of this. All right. One, two, three, four. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. So there we go, grip based pull ups. Different kind of challenge. It makes light. Hey. It makes light. Different kind of challenge. It makes light of the chin up. You have to be able to do chin ups comfortably to start doing variations like this because you want the, the thing you're really training to be the focus. In this case, it's the grip and forearm, throat crushing power. All right, and the last thing to show is something I don't really do that often because I feel as if this falls more into the more show off kind of entertainment realm it's the kind of thing you want to do if you're trying to show off how good you are um i prefer just to lift more weight than show off with any fancy techniques but still regardless they do add a variety of different angles to it and different grips none of that stupid walking up the ladder kind of stuff these are just different variations different angles of pull-ups all right number one is going to be the circle you're going to go up in a circle come down go up in a circle come down reverse all right one Two, three, and four. <laughs> okay, that was four. Next one, I call it a V slide. It's very similar to the circle. But instead of a circular motion, you're gonna go up one side, slide your chin across the bar, go back down, go across, slide the chin, go back down. So it's less flow to it, it's a bit more rigid. You're pulling definitely more to one side, lock into the other, pulling down to the bottom. B-slide. Been a while. One. I'm getting tired. Two. Three. Four. Four. It was only just four reps. Starting to get tired. And then the last one is going to be an L-shape pull-up. I haven't done this again. Another one of these ones I haven't done for a long time. Cause like I say, these are more theatrical kind of exercises. I don't do them very often, but I will put myself, my muscles on the line for this video. So this is basically, I'm gonna, easier to do this with underhand grip, pull it to the chest, your legs go up in an L shape. You keep them in an L shape, you do four repetitions. All right, and this is the last one of the day. I have no idea how many I've done, including the false start which is another eight repetitions. Let's see. All right. 90 degrees. One, two, three, 
Burn four. All right, that's it. Variations. There were this many variations and a total of this many repetitions. And it's a workout in itself. Today I deliberately decided, right, I'm not gonna do my regular pull workout. I'm just gonna have this as my workout. And I planned it strategically where it went from easy to more and more difficult to more and more technical, but easier with the last couple of lifts. So uh, I know I've had a good workout. My back feels used, it feels worked. But you can pick any of those exercises. Many of them, you can change grips. This you can change grips to that grip. You can do neutral grip. Variations, you can switch to an over-under grip, like a commando grip, but go wide, different positions. Neutral, with weight, without weight, with bands, without bands. Unlimited, with those X amount of variations, you have X amount of combinations you could use for that exercise. But there we go. You know how to do it, level up your game, impress your friends, entertain them, or keep it real and think that someday that could save your life. Put it into practice. What you see in these clips of people hanging off things, dying. You don't want to be that person. You want to be the person who gets up and says, Jesus, I almost bought the farm.